Praise the Lord and bless his holy name. Our Father, we look to you tonight, Lord, and we're thankful to you that you have sustained the children here, Lord. Father, that you have maintained, Lord, got a bright spot here in Jackson, Lord. Father, we may see the darkness all about. Father, caused by those that fail to walk in the light. Father, esteem the light and hold it close. So we thank you for the saints, Lord, and we ask that you continue to bless them. Also, Lord God, we ask that I would bless uh, these few moments, Lord God, that we'll be standing before the saints tonight. You'd make it worth their while, Lord God, uh, that the time would not be un uh, wasted, Lord Jesus, but it would be, Father, spent, Lord God, through the edification and strengthening of your people. May some idea, some uh, thought, Lord, some scripture, Lord, stick with us, Lord God, to keep us encouraged as we go as a result of this night's meeting. Amen. All right, we're going to go to St. John. And the seventh chapter of Italy. All right, in the 37th verse. And the last day... That great day of the feast, when Jesus stood and crying, said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. If any man is dry, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. All right. Let us turn, if you please, to Ezekiel and the 37th verse, uh, chapter. Excuse me. As we said, we started, we're not trying to be novel in the message tonight or in our coming. And God not trying to be, as it were, peculiar, because the Word of God needs to be expounded over and over again. Lest we forget, lest we slip from our steadfastness, lest we dry up in an attitude that I've heard it before. And I don't need to hear it anymore. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. Set me down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. Why they were out in that valley? Because they weren't on the mountain. Right. And while they were very dry, lacking water, and the spirit of the vultures had devoured the flesh, All right. and the sun had dried them up. If the sun has that effect upon you, the gospel light, then you're in bad shape when you're offended when the sun come out, amen, and dry you up. All right. And he said, you look on these bones. As it caused me to pass about. And there were very many in the open valley. Unprotected. And they were very dry. And he said unto me. Son of man. Can these bones live? And I answered. Oh Lord God. Thou knowest. They look bad. These are folks who have not esteemed the truth Lord. And it looks bad. These are folk that couldn't stand the sunlight, Lord, and they're very dry. Can they live? I don't know. You know. And of course, this pile of bones was symbolic of God's people in the wilderness that had become very dry because it hadn't rained upon them. And it didn't rain because they didn't want the rain. And he called the heaven to shut up on them. Yeah. 
Because they received not the love of the truth. All right. God bless you. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones. They wouldn't take the preaching before. Let's see if they'll take it now. All right. Amen. There's a situation where we can dry ourselves up by shunning and backing off and declaring that we will not hear what's being taught. God would draw the rain and cause not the dew to fall upon us anymore. Amen. It just allows us to dry all the way out. Amen. And then you're going to have to come to some conclusion in your dry condition whether you're going to stay that way or whether you're going to recant. Amen. Upon your disobedience and accept the word of God. And so he said, you preach to these bones. Thank God for the vile angels. Thank God for the preachers that won't back up. And some cases you don't know whether you're going to live or not. Some situation you get into, you look like they're beyond help. They have involved themselves and indulged themselves in so many things that they have become so dry that you couldn't get a drink if you tried. And the Lord said, if you believe on me as the scriptures say, it's got to be like the scriptures say. And many have changed the scriptures. Amen. Adjusted the scriptures, as we were telling you already. And disallowed some scriptures. The very ones that they need the most are the ones that they decided that is just too much trouble. And so they became very dry. Now we know the house of Israel was God's people in time past. And the Lord had brought Ezekiel out there to let him see what happened to folks that rebelled against him. The people that will put the brakes on and won't let them off against him. People that say unto the prophets, prophesy smooth things to us. Those that say that it's too hard, that it's too fanatic, it's too difficult to try to be a Christian and I'm weary with it. And not only that, i got a few things I'd like to do to enjoy before I die. All right. And they became very dry. Within them was pride, because that's what dry you up. Yeah. Amen. And prejudice, and that's not to be found in God's people. Right. Amen. Pride, contentions, lies, and worldly entertainment. Yeah. And they were very dry because they didn't want to hear the word of God. And so he say, that same word that they rejected is the only word that can save them. And so, oh Ezekiel, let it roll. You preach to these bones. Amen. Cry out and spare out, they're very dry. Amen. If you go down in Babylon, you'll find out that it's very dry. Right. I mean, you can't get a drink down there if you try. Right. Their testimonies, amen, are so dry as powder. Amen. And their experience is dry as crackers. And it can't make it no further. And you can't get any inspiration down there to really serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. But there's one more thing that can help them if they will be helped. And that is they will hear the word of the Lord. All bones. Hear the word of the Lord. Preach these bones and say unto them. All oh, you dry bones, dry bone religion, amen, was on hand. Many have gone there and professed to be the people of God, but it's a trouble to them to even try to give a testimony. Amen, and their songs hold no meaning, and their testimony is very, very uninspiring. Amen, uh, the things they say and the things they do uh, can't help anybody. But the Lord said, if you believe on me, as the scriptures say, out of your belly. Praise God. God's going to let something flow forth from you. That's going to be an inspiration to those that are around you. That's going to cause them to wonder where you got it and is there any more. Amen. And he said, you let it roll. Amen. Well, Ezekiel. And he said, all oh, you dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. Come on, let's get dressed for God. Let's get some haircuts. Amen. Yeah. I get that jewelry off. Take them beads off. Amen. Yeah. I get with your husband. Amen. I quit laying out your wife. Get your children trained. Learn how to pray. 
Or get rid of that television. It's drying you out. Amen. Drop some of these uh, drug practices that you have. Take it hold and say there's no harm in it. It has harmed you. It has dried you out. Amen. You look like skeleton bones laying out there. Amen. Your flesh has been picked off by the spirits you let hang around. Oh, dry bones. Come on. Come on. Hear the word of the Lord. Amen. That's up to help for you if you'll accept help. Amen. If you'll desist that uh, from your poor sisting and doing your own will. If you learn to roll out of bed at night and pray. Yeah. If you learn to get up and come to church and on time. Yeah. If you learn how to contribute something to the services. Yeah. If you learn how to resist the evil and do what's right. Bones rise up. Oh, you dry bones. You just throw dry. Oh, let them hear the word of the Lord. Oh, you dry bones, you hear? Amen. The judgments of God. What's the matter with you? Too dry. All right. There's water enough for all, but you're dry. Praise God. Thus saith the Lord God unto the bones. All right. Oh, backslidden apostatized church. Yeah. God got something for you if you listen. Yeah. Amen. Turn off the radio and sit there trying to feed yourself and be pastored by the radio box. Out there, trying to be entertained and inspired by the television box. Right. Amen. That's the word passing time and trying to learn something from the uh, girly books and from the filler right. books and from just your books and from the checker games and yeah. from all this foolishness that's going to dry your soul out. Yeah. Right. You hear the word of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Pull them ungodly shoes off uh, and pull them ungodly pants off uh, yeah. and pull that ungodly shirt off and yeah. get dressed yeah. for God and yeah. hear the word of the Lord, you dry bones. So, Ezekiel, have mercy on no, you dry bones. I mean, you'll never win anybody if you preach like that. If you come too much to the point. I mean, if you come and lay down a holy dress and holy walk and holy talk and holy marriage, uh, thank God and holy children, uh, be a uh, holy child raising. Amen. No movies for the saints. Amen on any ungodly parties. We don't go there. You hear the word of the Lord just right and get dressed right. Amen. Put away the pride out of your heart. Amen. The lust out of your eyes. And hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you. And will bring your flesh upon you. And cover you with skin. And put breath in you. And you shall live. Amen. And you shall know that I am the Lord. And so I prophesied as I was commanded. I didn't prophesy as though it came to my thought to do it. I didn't decide that I'm going to give them the same what they already had so they can stay dry. Amen. But the word of God is what I brought them. As I was commanded of God. Too many ministers around are preaching things God don't know is I haven't commanded them to preach. Yeah. They okaying that which God had not okayed. And they're justifying that which God uh, have already said going to dry us up if we get uh, and persist in it. And he says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. Amen. Come on now. Yeah. And we'd run back to the Revelation 8 chapter and find out that there's nothing new, hardly. God has a principle, a preach the word, take it or leave it. Take it, praise God, you can have life, you can live. You leave it, and I'll take the light away from you and let you lay there dry bones forever. Out in the desert place uh, where the vultures will get you. Amen, out where the doleful creatures are. Where the old ungodly insect spirits will get you. Out where your flesh will be picked off of you. And the sun will bleach your bones. And you'll be out there, as it were, uh, talking about, praise the Lord. It'll be dry, dry, dry. No hope of heaven. Not no, no water there. No help there. No inspiration for anybody. Not a light for the world. No hope for the world. He said your remedy and help is to hear the word of the Lord. Yeah. Oh, he told oh, Ezekiel in words, uh, the same as he told uh, Isaiah, cry out and spare not. These bones are dry. Start crying. Yeah. 
Amen. The whole counsel of God. Don't leave anything uncovered. Amen. Don't yield to their pet uh, their desires. Amen. Don't look at their faces. If their faces are hard against you, cry out and look at me. Thank God. Don't be afraid of the face. Amen. Don't spare anything. Amen. We're here from where they, they drive for some reason. Amen. We don't be just going dry because we're being so obedient. We don't dry up because we're so conscientious. Amen. We're not dry and can't testify and can't read and can't preach and can't pray uh, just because uh, maybe uh, uh, we got our feelings offended. There's something that makes us be dry, saints of God. When God said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You say you're talking about those bones in the valley. What valley are you in? All right. Are you in the valley of no return? Do you intend to not only dry but to rot, decay, and vanish? God have he said, listen, I'm going to preach to you. I'm going to preach to you. Look at your shoes. All you dry bones, take your shoes off and take a look at them and see if they're godly or not. Yeah. See if they're saintly. And then take a look at your wardrobe. Throw the doors open. Yeah. And then look way back in the corner and see if those you wear at work. See, thank God if those are saintly right. ones. Amen. 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 See if those are ones, uh, pray God, that you want to go out and be accepted on your job. And so you raise your heels a little more and tighten your skirt a little more and lift it up a little bit more. All right. All right. Brother, and check your vocabulary. Amen. Look and see what were you using on the job? Do you talk that slang stuff and that world stuff and listen to them jokes on the job? And when you come among the saints and sanctimonious, you'll be so dry. You'll be so dry. Amen. Follow peace of all men and holiness. Amen. Without, without no man shall see the Lord. Hypocrisy is not what God's looking for. He's not looking for actors. If he's looking for actors, then the Hollywood folks could go to heaven. Right. Amen. But you, he's not looking for folks that act like they're saints and down in their hearts they're not. And they know they're not. Amen. Amen. He's talking about an apostasy condition. And we continue in our dryness, that's where we'll be. In the valley where the burning sun that bleached us out made us useless for the kingdom of God. No flesh. Amen. No doctrine. Thank God that you can esteem it's all just a trouble to even consider it. Oh, bones, hear the word of the Lord. Have we heard the word? Thank God. What happens when the gospel is preached? Isaiah, let's go here to Isaiah 35. Familiar scripture. Thank God. The word, you know, false religion got it all messed up. But thank God we can understand and, and profit by these scriptures. Mm -hmm. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. Oh, Ezekiel, let's hear the word of the Lord. Come on, come on, uh, seventh angel, cry out and spare not. Uh, amen. Let's hear the word of the Lord. Let it roll. Let judgment roll down like water. Righteousness of the mighty stream. Why? So we can make some blossoms around here. Amen. Let's see. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy. And singing the glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. And it will tell you what happens in the desert. Thank God what happens in the valley. Praise God when the word of God has free course. Amen. Amen. When the people will accept the word of God with gladness. And rejoice in judgment. And be glad, praise God, for the feet upon the mountains. That bring good tidings that say unto thee, O Israel, thy God liveth. Let him live. Praise God in you. All right. Say to them that have a fearful heart, be strong. Oh, we got a good God. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. Praise God. We're talking about uh, rain. Praise God. And dew. Thank God. And hail uh, in the desert places to make them blossom. You say, I don't think hail would make me blossom. Yeah, sorry, if you're hard-headed enough, that's what it takes to get you to obey. 
And people say, well, I don't like you to preach like that. that you need hail now and then when you're sleeping on the job. Yes. And you know some people to sleep through the rain. Ain't God, but you won't sleep through the talent. All the hail. Hail is a talent. Praise God. Then he said, their eyes that are blind shall be opened. You know, I didn't see any need in getting dressed for God before. You know, I didn't see any need. I thought a little lipstick would help me out, make me pretty. I, I, I didn't see any need. Uh, thank God, uh, shutting off the TV. I didn't see what was wrong with it. Uh, you know, I didn't see nothing. Uh, what was wrong with letting my children go to the movies or go next door and watch TV? Yes. I, I didn't see nothing wrong with that. I'll get my husband straight now and then. Hold your tongue. There's a need. You want to be loved? Sisters, be lovely. That's right. If you want to be cherished, don't get no sharp tongue. Amen. I didn't see any need in that. But he said the eyes of the blind are going to come open. And the ears of the deep shall be unstopped. One had to be told four or five times not to do this and not to go there. There are certain people you ought not be fellowshipping with. We tell you, don't be running around there. The evil communication, corrupt good manners. Amen. I mean, there's no way you can run with those. Uh, I'll be affected. Next time you see them, they're with them again. Ah, oh, he's going to unstop your ears. Praise God. When the judgment come down, if you'll accept it, God will help you. Thank God and your cheeks will blossom like a rose. Thank God. Eyes are going to be open. And then shall the lame man couldn't walk right before. All right. Amen. He said, we followed his footsteps who did no sin. Yeah, the other time you couldn't walk there before. Every time you take a step, you look good farther and farther away from the pathway. Oh, you lame now. There's something wrong with your spirit. And you're trying to get away for a while so you can get out there and do your thing and then come back with a sober face trying to get straight with God again. Right. Amen. Same old folks that get tired of living holy. Amen. Get tired of living for God. Yeah. And every now and then they duck out. Well, they duck out. Any time that you duck out in the world rest from the things of God, you were there. Right. And you were worried while you was in. Right. And that's why you can go out there and get comforted. But a true saint is not going out in the world for comfort. They're not going out there to rest. No, sir, there's something about your pretense that makes you weary after a while. Uh oh, we're going to get the lame man to walk straight now. Amen. Straighten up. And he said, Let that which is in the way be healed. According to the Hebrew letter, there's still lame folk around that their foot somehow or another keeps aiming on the outside. And before you know it, they're out in the field somewhere. Where they should have come from and stayed. Oh, so the lame, then man, he can leap like a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness, out there in the desert place, uh, shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. Streams in the desert. You just spawn Ezekiel and lay it down in the spirit. You just keep on preaching and cry out, and, and don't you spare. You preach until the army is on its feet. You preach till the bones have come together. You preach till unity is obtained. You preach till the enemy see them rise up and be afraid. Ezekiel, don't hold back, cry out, and preach that the trumpet sound long and loud. Praise God, let's see what the gospel will do for God's people. Let's see. We can't take this old disconnected, amen, and destroyed condition and restore it. If they're here. Amen. Streams in your deserts. Yeah. Praise God, a place to get a drink. Yeah. Amen. That morning when you get up and feeling dry, you can get down and get a prayer through. Yeah. Praise God, the saints can come over. Thank God, and they begin talking with you. And before you know the stream run by, and you get your drink. Uh, and when the saints leave, you feel so much better. Why? Because your desert has been watered. Yeah. Praise God, streams in the desert. Yeah. Amen. There's something for us, saints, that we'll stay safe. God has a plan for us. To, amen. To stay saved and be encouraged. Ezekiel. Amen. Call out uh, and spare not. Amen. Lift up your voice uh, and keep on preaching. Oh, he said, be instant in season and out of season. Amen. amen. Reprove, rebuke, and with all long suffering. Yeah. And make sure you got the doctrine. Amen. Don't preach man's opinion. Too much of that going on right now. Right. Preach the doctrine, please. Oh, mighty God, don't you love your children? 
Uh huh. He called me to pass by, and there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Have you been dry? Oh, how's your condition today? How's your condition? The woman at the well was very dry. She was very dry. Although she was drawing literal water, but her soul was dry. She was trying to satisfy her dryness in her desert area. Running, collecting men. They didn't satisfy her. They did not. She had gone somewhere to satisfy the flesh, but satisfying the flesh won't satisfy the soul. Amen. It will not cause streams in your desert. Amen. It will not cause rain upon your spirit. Amen. The dude don't descend when you're sinning. Uh uh. She said she wanted some water, but you can't have it while you're in sin. Because sin is what made you dry. So give up your sin. Thank God, and then I'll give you the water. And he said, you know, it's beginning, I must needs be go through Samaria. Why? Because there's some desert land down there. Not only with the woman, but the men folk in the city who may have been involved one way or the other. And I want you to take a stream into the city. And when Jesus began to tell her about her condition, she ran to the city and told the men in the city, Come on out here, I found a man that told me everything I ever did. Right. Thank God he promised me a, a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Yeah. Amen. And the man came out and they believed on God. Not just because of what the woman said, because they got a stream too. Yeah. They began to believe. It's good for us things to have a stream. Yeah. Amen. Thank God for the well, but if it spring up, thank God then they can run. Right. Thank God like a stream and somebody can stop by. Somebody who's dry. Amen. Somebody's about ready to give up. Somebody's under a burden. Yes, accusation. Amen. Nobody don't love me no more. Yes. Amen. All my luck is bad. The Lord don't bless me anymore. My husband this morning told me to be quiet. And he was right. <laughs> but I'm dry anyhow. Thank God we need somebody to drop in. Thank God and help our well. Drop in, Lord, and refresh us. And cause us to esteem the things of God more and more. Maybe you better come down by the well and hope Jesus come by. And he will if you stand well dry and willing to fix it. If you're here tonight and not saved, Jesus will meet you. Amen. In a place where you can get a drink. He'll meet you while you don't have to be powder anymore. Thank God he'll meet you where you don't crumble and crack it. Amen. Every time the thunder roll, uh-uh. Every time judgment come forth, you crack up. That's because you're too dry. Thank God you need a little more moisture. You need to be moisturized. Ezekiel, the preacher. Amen, the judgment preacher. Ezekiel, the one, uh, praise God by the gift and, uh, or shall we say, ordination of God, was told to stand and preach to all Israel. Dry bone church. You preach the gospel. You lay down the judgments. Uh, you show the house to the house. Uh, I mean, you show them of their ungodly condition. You show them the position that they have slipped into, yet saying we're the people of God. Let it roll, Ezekiel. Amen. Ezekiel began to preach them. And you know the result of it, that they received something. Now we want to go here to Ezekiel 47 chapter, and that's not so far away. And we want to thank God and make a provision for folks that are dry, for lands that can't bloom. Amen. For wilderness areas that have no roses, uh, and where the flowers won't grow. Afterward, he brought me again to the door of the house, and behold, waters issued from out from under the threshold. Of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east. And the waters came down from under the right side of the house. At the south side of the altar. And he brought me out of the way of the gate northward. And led me about the way uh, without 
unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward, and behold, there ran waters on the right side. And when the man had the line in his hand, and this will make the water run when you get the line, the plumb line. Every man had a line in his hand, and he went forth eastward, and that's where light come from. That's where knowledge comes from. That's where the wisdom of God is shining in from the sun, from the east. And he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters, and the waters went to my ankles. Keep on preaching. All right. Amen. Just keep on preaching. Don't back off now. Amen. You got the feet wet. Now let's see what else we can do. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand. Amen. And got to the ankles. Again, he measured a thousand. And he brought me through the waters. The water was to the knees. Amen. The water was to the knees. And we know that the water, as we read uh, in John, that that was a, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The running waters of God that issue from beneath the throne. Mm -hmm. The waters. Amen. Oh, thank God. And he measured a thousand. Water was to the Uh, you get dry and the folks you listen to you be dry but uh, Paul told Timothy that if you will uh, 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 shall adhere and attain and stick to this doctrine you'll save not only yourself but those that hear you so keep on preaching it's good for you to the lines afterward he measured a thousand amen but they're going east don't you see he's heading toward the light don't you see I mean, he's not running from the light. He's not backing off. But he's heading into the light with his rod to measure. He's heading into the light. You can't live and you can't be anything for God or backing off the light. I mean, you can't be getting away from it. And that's apostasy. And that was a problem too much already. But you see, he was heading east with his rod, according to what we're reading here, I believe. Amen. And afterward, he measured. And uh, it was a river that I could not pass over. If you believe on me, he said, as the scripture hath said, out of thy belly shall flow. Now thank God for the well. Right. But we want the well to overflow sometime. Yeah. Amen. And he said it will overflow. Yeah. And he said, out of your belly shall flow rivers yeah. of living water. Right. Amen. There are some of you all saved, probably most of you saved, probably all of you saved here. Because you got to drink one day and it tastes good. Amen. You got a drink one day and it healed your parched condition. Yeah, yeah. Amen. You had a drink one day and the dust was abated. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And you came toward the east. Amen. Getting to the water. Where did it come from? Yeah. I want some more of it. Yeah, right. Amen. I'm thirsty. Yeah. If any man hungry and thirsty after righteousness, I got a river to fill him up. He yeah. shall be filled. Yeah. But folks that back all the truth will never get filled. Yeah. Amen. So I want to get into the ankles and maybe get the bottom of the foot wet. And that's satisfying for a while. Ah, oh, but he said, keep on walking. Hey, God, keep on measuring. Walk and measure and walk and measure. Praise God. Tell me more. Praise God. And just a little something to dust your soul off now and then. Praise God. Let's go a little further. Let's get a little closer. We're in an old apostatizing condition where people try to back off. They don't want to go east. And I said, I want to face east and back up. But go forward and measure. It gets deeper out front. It gets better out front. Amen. Don't be satisfied with just a wet footprint. Oh, it was a river that it could not pass over. For the waters were risen. Yeah. Waters to swim in. Yeah. Well, you gotta get on out and go for it. Get on out and do backstrokes and side strokes and whatever stroke you want to do, get out there and enjoy. Praise God the water. I'm gonna tell you on a Pentecost. Uh, thank God when the Holy Ghost moved in. Uh, but he, uh, praise God, them folks had a good time that day. Oh, they was having a good time. Uh, they were rejoicing and 
there and cavorting and flipping in the water. Where is God? And the folks standing by say, what's the matter with them? They're drunk. They're drunk. They're drunk. Now we're we having a good time. We are in deep water. Thank God. We live in. We live in. Praise God. We live in. Get on out. Be what God will have you to be. Oh, Lord Jesus, to go on out some more. Sometimes we think we're doing pretty good because every now and then we flip and hear a splash. Oh, get on out there, praise God. Thank God, get out there in the swimming water. Amen. They could not be passed over. In other words, it's unlimited joys and pleasures. Amen. That is, you'll never pass away. You can't get through it. Lord Jesus. Lord, help us to be faithful. Mm -hmm. And when he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? And then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. I want to show you something yet. And when he had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were many trees on one side and on the other. Then he said unto me, These waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert. <laughs> Thank God. Are you living in the desert? Are you in the desert? And it shall come to pass that the fishes shall stand upon it from... Where to say it? All right. And J.D., I believe it says something I get into somewhere else. They shall be a pal, a place to spread forth nets. The fish shall be according to their kinds. The fish of the great sea, exceeding many. In a desert, don't you understand? Flowers, fish, amen, blossoms, blooms, trees. Out in the desert used to be streams. Oh, we're going to go back here to Isaiah 35. And see what God have on board for us. Now, saints of God, you know that these old Israelites did not get this. You know the Lord was speaking pro prophetically about his salvation of the New Testament. Yes. Amen. Because as far as them folks are concerned, Jesus said the Holy Ghost had not come yet. And so, therefore, he is symbolizing something that has to do with us. Streams in the desert. Yes. Some people are looking for literal fulfillment in that. You know that if God would actually put literal streams in the desert, folks still go to hell. But don't you know if he put streams in your spiritual desert? Thank God that will help you. Yeah. Amen. That will save you. <laughs> Praise God. And it said in the sixth verse, Then shall the lame man leap his heart, the tongue of the dead, dumb sing, for the wilderness, or for in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert, and the parched ground shall become a pool. Amen. In the thirsty land, springs of water, and the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. We're going to get rid of your dragon. Amen. Uh, where the dragon used to be, we're going to put in, amen, some, uh, some green there. We're going to put in some plants there. We're going to let things grow where you were stagnated. And only the adult for creatures were involved in themselves. The Spirit of God is precious to us, saints of God. My, we could have a good time and splash in the water and nobody's around. Thank God sometime, man, you just be around, you know, just meditating on the things of God and the floodgates open up and the room fill up. Praise God, and you in there and that water just having a good time and, and it's a good thing you don't have no unsafe husband at home. He wonder whether you crazy or not. Who are you talking to? Who's in here? It's just me and Jesus, sir. Praise God, and I'm swimming in deep water. Hey Amen. I'm just having a great time out here. Having a great time. She said, you're crazy. Uh-uh. No, I'm not drunk. It's the third hour of the day. I'm not crazy. I'm enjoying. Amen. The things of God. The things of God. There is a river. If you dry. We're going to look here into the 22nd chapter of the Revelation. Amen. We know that God had a plan because it's consistently set forth. Amen. He told the woman, I got water for you. She thought he had maybe a bucket of water. 
I mean, she underestimated what was that, what, what was available. I mean, you know, some people, uh, maybe a, a, a glass, maybe a bucket, or maybe a couple bucket. Maybe I right, in Jacob's well here, we got more water than would he have. How he gonna get water with that short rope? He ain't got even got a rope. He can't get it. You got nothing to draw with, sir. <laughs> oh, she just didn't know. She just didn't know the expanse of God's grace. She didn't know the joy that comes from living, amen, for God and being in his company. She was out there looking for water that's going to call, that she's going to thirst again. But God gave her a river. Praise God that it will suffice her dryness. Praise God. And if your well won't do, we got a river for you. Praise God. And not just a little stream, uh, thank God, but a river that you can't swim across. Now in this 22nd chapter of Revelation, and we're going to look over here in the first verse. This is John. Amen. He's seeing the church. God had been showing him the church, and now he wants to show him the moving power that's behind the church. When Peter believes that when he's washed by the cleansed by the washing of the water, by the word, he was not talking about literal water like the woman was trying to get. Got plenty of water to wash. Thank God, the word and the spirit, the washing of the water, or the wa uh, washing of the water by the word, the word and the spirit agree, and they'll get you cleaned up if you'll listen. Thank God, if you believe as the scripture has said, thank God you can be clean. Many people don't want to be like the scripture has said. Many people never really get down to where they get enjoy salvation because they never get out like the scripture has said. I mean, they want to adjust it and do it the way they want to do it. And their joy is not overflowing. Oh, no. No, sir. They don't have enough of themselves. They have nothing to share with anybody. You come over to get a little cheering up. Now, when I say, well, I feel so bad today. I need cheering up. Well, we better call somebody. But we both need. We both dry. Uh-uh. And you know when you get up and pretend... I mean, you want to imitate the saints to shout and you get up. Don't you know you look dry? Oh, you want to imitate the saints. It's my turn. You try to get up and set the house on fire, you know, and you really, you don't have no water. How are you going to do it? Sit down. You're dry. you dry. You get up and just spewing dust about. Where does dust come from? A dry saint got up and tried to imitate that which he didn't have and he didn't have. This is what we want to see. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. Clear as crystal. Proceeding off from the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street thereof, on either side of the river, there was the trees of life. And I told you, we already read in Ezekiel, that where the rivers are, there will be the trees. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Not a dry, un I shall say unproductive tree, but shall bring forth his fruit in his season. Why? Because he's planted by the river of water. Thank God. Just an illustration. The natural tree planted by the water said he shall see no drought. So the spiritual saint planted by the river of this water shall see no drought. He's not going to be dry. The bones was not going to be his lot. Praise God. In the midst of the street of it, on the east side of the river, what river? The pure river of life. Where the streams that we get able to get a hold of. Praise God. It emanates off. It forks off from that river for us. Because there's only one Lord and one Spirit. So I know that when he speaks of that water and that stream and river, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Thank God we have the Holy Spirit, of course, and we are of the same uh, our water here, clear as crystal. Tree of life would bear twelve manner of fruits and yielded a fruit every month and the leaves of the trees for the healing of the nations. Can you be a tree of righteousness, the planting of the Lord? And it's can some be healed? Amen by your leaves. Can they take shelter? Amen by you. What about it? Jesus loves us. He's provided that we don't have to be dry. 
Thank God. Let us not grieve the Spirit. Let's don't grieve. Then we're going to read Psalm 46, and I think we, thank God, might have covered the rivers that we want to cover. Uh huh. God is our refuge and our strength. Our very present help in trouble. Therefore he will, we will not fear. Though the earth be removed. And though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled. Amen. Though the mountains shake uh, with the swelling thereof. And we were uh, telling you the other evening about the mountains. And about the earthquakes and things that should not shake the saints loose. Why? Because when you have the water of God's Spirit, when you are accompanied by the Holy Ghost, these things are not going to move you. No, sir, let the mountains, but they're not the Mount Zion. It'll never be removed. Amen. Amen. If the other mountains are false religion that men put up, that can't stand the shaking of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Though the waters there roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there, in spite of all that, there is a river. Yes. Here's our coffin. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God and the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Thank God. This city to make us glad, saints. Uh, this city is to make us, uh, uh, this river, excuse me, is to make us glad. This river, praise God, is for the healing of the nations. Uh, yes. Why? Because it uh, uh, nourishes and waters the trees and the nations can come uh, and get some fruit from you. They can come and be under your shadow uh, and you can instruct them and help them out and lead them to Christ as the woman yes. at the well. When she got a little water, she ran for somebody. Praise God and brought them to Jesus. Yes. Amen. That they might have some help. And Lord knows she needed help. Amen. Anyone in that condition... That that woman was in need help. Yes. If you're here tonight in that condition, in a sin condition, in a dry condition, in an unhappy condition. Amen. If you are here tonight, uh, amen, and you can't really feel like that God is with you. If you're here tonight and you're not really uh, convinced that you can make it, uh, that God is on your side. Uh, there is a river. There is a river. There is water. Praise God that it will dry up your wilderness condition. Amen. Because things can't live uh, around you because the word said, She that lives in pleasure is dead while she lives. Uh, she needs to be planted uh, by the rivers of water. She needs uh, to meet with the Savior. Thank God there's water. And to spare. There's water not only to drink. There's water to swim in. Amen. There's no limit to uh, praise God to how much God can please you. To how much he can satisfy you. All your soul can stand. Uh, God can put it on you if you believe on me. As the scriptures have said. As the scriptures have said. If you put your trust in God. Amen. If you lean on him and drop your own personal conditions and conviction. If you let go of old dry religion. Amen. And false doctrines. Uh, amen. God's got a river for you. And he'll give it to you. Yes, sir. You see, the uh, saints are praising God. Uh, and some feel like running. Uh, praise God. Stay in the spirit. Uh, and make glad the city of God. That makes the city of God glad. Are you glad tonight? Are you glad tonight? Amen. Are you been one that grieved the spirit? Oh, he said grieve not the spirit. Where? That's our source. Thank God of, of moisture. That's our source of swimming waters. That's our source of cleansing. That's our source of whatever. Thank God is going to make our spirit glad. That's going to make our soul satisfied. Grieve not the spirit. Uh, praise God by which you are Sealed until the day of redemption. We're talking about water. Thank God of the spirit that will seal you. Through the day of condemnation. Uh -oh, shall we say redemption. And remove you from condemnation. Amen. And take away the cursing and the swearing. Take away the distraught feeling. Take away the old feeling of nothing's going to work out. Take away that old beatnik feeling. That uh, whoop generation feeling that you have down inside. Amen. Take it away. The, the wars and the news on the radio, uh, it scares you. Makes you feel bad. And you wonder if the bombs are going to fall tonight. Uh, or whether the army is going to march here. Or whether we come into communism. Yeah, there is a river. Thank God to take care of that kind of uh, anxieties and troubles. There is a river. The streams whereof make glad the city of God. Have you got a stream for the city of God? Are you here with cistern? This cracked. And hold the water. 
Are you here tonight? Dry bones. Dry bones. If you believe on me, as the scripture has said, you won't be dry bones anymore. Thank God you got to hear the preaching of the word. I'm going to tell you that army that rose up out of them, at the dust out there in Ezekiel's place. The army that rose up out of the dust out of the, the desert. And if they hadn't taken heed to the preaching of God's word, they'd have been a duster today. Thank God. But they said that when Ezekiel preached faithfully as God has said and brought forth the word of God to them, he said that they rose up a mighty army exceeding. You know, it said their bones come to their bone. You need to come to your bones. That's right. You need to yoke up with God. You need to yoke up with the body of Christ. You need to yoke up. He said the, the body, praise God, the foot, amen, and the knee, the leg, praise God, the thigh bone. You need to get into the body of Christ, bone to his bone. God didn't uh, make us to send us to hell. We didn't come here to go to hell. We came here that God might uh, receive us in the glory. You need to get to your bone. If you're living in sin, you're not where you ought to be. Thank God. If you drive tonight... Won't you come for a drink? There is something to draw with. Thank God for your thirsty soul. God bless you. Amen. What a mighty God. What a merciful God. God knows what's needed and he always sends it just in time. You know, dear one, there's no need of letting this meeting close and Dry in your soul. Don't have a song when he comes. Don't have a song when he leaves. Don't have a testimony when he comes. Don't have one when he leaves. Don't have a prayer when he comes. Don't have a prayer when it's over. Dear one, this is an opportunity. Yes. And may God help us. I trust that we have not become so dry that we are unable to respond. You know, dear one, there are some bones that have been bleaching so long that there just is no life left for them but they want if by any means this message if you can feel any kind of stir oh my. any kind of movement yes. now they want let us not content ourselves because we feel a little a uh, few drops God has blessed some of us now let's get that stream going let's get the stream going so that we can refresh somebody else amen some people are too easily contented God bless them just a little bit and they're ready to relax. But they want now is the time to really dig and get the stream flowing. Get the stream flowing. We're going to stand. We're going to stand. They want let this be a revolution for you. Let this be a time so you won't be on the sacrifice table. Shall we stand? The altar or the prayer room. If you desire help, you may come to the altar or you may go to the prayer room. Amen. Let God put that water. Let God start that river in your soul. We should be longing for it. We shouldn't be able to contend. I said, well, I went to the prayer room the other day, but you don't have the river yet. God just blessed you. You don't have the river yet. And you ought to be longing. They want to be, if God did anything for you at all, you ought to be longing to have a real river flowing. Amen. They want to grieve my heart. My God, help us don't let a meeting like this, a summer like this pass. And my God, and they haven't failed a stream of water, maybe in months in many cases. In months, in many cases, God help us. God help us. God help us. God bless, we pray. Hey, we might feel a real rib in our soul so that we might be able to refresh somebody else. We won't be waiting for the next shower to fall. We'll have something in our soul to keep us going. Some people, they want can only go on the strength of a shower. God send them a good message and maybe give them a shower. We, we need something in our soul that will perpetuate us. We need something down inside. May God help us that give us a testimony that we can refrain sometime from going forth in testimony. Amen. And we were standing on our feet waiting for the next one to sit so we can go forth. That the song will become meaningless to us. I, God help us. There are those who at one time could hardly sing certain songs unless they would burst forth with joy. But now the songs are meaningless. The sermons are little or no effect. Their own prayers are becoming dry. Their own experience is becoming a burden to them. May God help us. My God, a message like this ought to stir our hearts. A message like this should shake our very foundations. A message like this should cause us to sprawl on the altar before God until the stream breaks forth in our soul. 
what do we sing? What do we sing? What do we, are you sensitive enough to recognize? Do you really know your plight? Do you really know your predicament? Brother, I would want this meeting to leave me dry. I would want this meeting to leave me without a testimony. I'm going to tell you the one. Brother, when you don't feel any water in your soul, there's something drastically wrong. When you don't have a testimony flowing, there's something drastically wrong. You might not hear me. You might hear me say it often and you might ignore me, but do you want there's something wrong? Amen. When the song of Zion cannot bless your soul, there's something wrong. They will dry you up and you can't express yourself and then you'll begin to excuse it. Oh God, we should be longing to see that fountain bubbling forth once more. Amen. This is our opportunity. Shall we sing a verse? Shall we sing a verse, dear one? Now because God has blessed you a little, don't settle with that. Don't settle with just a little drop. Dear one, let's get that stream flowing. Let's get that stream flowing. Ministers, all to work a little pray with those souls. My God. God might give us something. You know, dear one, when you drop in your soul, it's going to call you to get worldly. You're going to start seeking worldly pleasure. You're going to start being sociable and want to run and rip and, and then have things to entertain your life. Why? There's no river flowing in your soul. And you've got to make up for it with worldly pleasure. Let's not settle for anything less than a full river. Amen. What, what do we say? God set something off in your soul that 
can bring that back that pristine glory can bring back that joy you once expressed I mean when the joy of God just filled your very soul God have mercy it seemed the one that we would miss the presence of God so much it seemed the fact that we can't meet God in prayer anymore would, would stir our hearts and would tear us up to a degree that we'd be sprawling before God crying oh, Lord let me feel that free once more Lord, let me feel that refreshing one more time. Yes. God help us. They won't just go into the altar just to, for, for, for a superficial reason. It's not enough. We need to get that river flowing in our souls. Just that will do better. That's not enough. We need to get before God. Lord, I want the river. I'm not going to settle just for better. I'll settle for nothing less than the river. Why don't you come, Lord? Let's pray together. Let's break through. Let's break through. Let's break that dam. Let's break that floodgate open tonight. And let that river flow in your soul. So, Lord, I'm going to settle for nothing less than a real river. Thank God, something that will flow through my soul and cause me to testify. Something that will cause me to witness. Something that will cause me to go forth like I used to. Oh, God bless me, pray. Let's sing another verse.